that's for you. So, I'm uh, Miggy Angel. Uh, that was the Pogues. Who was that? Who was that, Jay? Uh, it was, uh, Wild Rover. Wild Rover by the Pogues. Lovely bit of uh, Shane McGowan there. We are joined today um, and right now by uh, Fabrizio Federico. Is that right? Yeah, you're spot on. Right. Uh, I'm very interested in this guy. We've just been talking, haven't we? Ain't sort of overdone it. Like nah, <laughs> nah. It's just right, beginning. You? you got plenty left. How would you describe yourself? Um, freewheeling. Freewheeling? Uh, yeah. Free spiriting. Uh, I don't okay. Know. So, uh, what I know of you is that you're a filmmaker. Mm -hmm. You uh, you had a film called Black Biscuit. Yeah. And do you want to tell us a little bit about that? I mean, it's... It, what it's I'm interested in is, yeah, y your techniques and, and oh, the God. way that you, the film came about and uh, where you're at with that at the moment. Uh, well, I started working on it about three years ago, so I spent a year filming, a year editing, and a year, like, getting it out there and telling people about it. So, uh, but uh, I just I just wanted to make something completely different. And uh, what I had at the time was just my mobile phone for video because I'd just gotten deported from America, so I didn't have much money, and I just wanted to start over. And I'd been doing music in the States, and now yeah. I'm like, you know, I've always loved cinema, and uh, I always feel like, you know, such a buzz doing it, so I just got out there and started filming what was happening in the streets at the time, and I kind of wanted to capture, like, uh, drifters, and uh, a different part of society than what you usually see in films, because the mainstream, I think, has gotten so, like, lukewarm yep. and dull and boring and all that, so I just wanted to kind of, like, bring... And I bring like some balls back to cinema, you know. Cool, that sounds great. I mean, it, it, some of the stuff that interested me when I was doing a little bit of research on you yesterday, I was mm. sort of looking looking through Google and looking on your website. Is this? You mentioned the, the mobile phone. Was the f was the film shot? only on the mobile phone oh no it was just anything we could get a hand on most of it was shot on mobile phones yeah. i mean it's the easiest thing i'd walk around the streets and if i'd saw someone like a street superstar and i'd be like well you're great you know you should be in a movie i'd just get my phone out i'd go up to him and be like you want to be in a movie and uh, you know i'd yeah. get to know him and all that and yeah. uh, we'd arrange something otherwise we use um we use children's cameras uh but all plenty of equipment tech. yeah yeah like yeah. i wanted it to look like a polaroid like a crappy version of a polaroid uh you know i think uh too many pixels out there yeah. these days yeah you know? no 3d yeah yeah no yeah. 3d you weren't wearing glasses at your uh at your <laughs> well, you movies. could um, what, do you want to talk a little bit about your aesthetic and how that came about and what what, what you've what, what that's influenced by and kind of maybe what that's kicking against as well? Oh yeah, um, I mean I think I'm uh, kind of influenced by like existentialism, um, where you can just you can do anything and two plus two equals five, you know that type of thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't believe that you need to be taught how to make art, like go to university and stuff like that. You just feel it, and that's how I am. You know, if I feel something, I do it. Um, I, I'm not really into money or anything like that. I, I can't ever picture myself being like brought out to make a film, but uh, I just follow my heart, and uh, this is kind of what came out of it. It's. Uh, I almost felt like I was like dancing around like a bonfire, right. and like having a hallucination the whole time. It was a really weird year. I had lots of like. You know, I get getting harassed by the police, and they took my, you know, they took my uh, my footage off me a number of times, and then another time I got uh, I got accused of kidnapping, and I had to turn myself into him, be like, you know, I'm like kidnapped. <laughs> it was like a yeah, really extras. weird. It was a really weird year. It's I, my sad man. I've been I've been told you I've, I've been jinxed since making this film. I just broke my foot about two months ago. Um, I'm working on my new film and um, I want to try something different. There's these cameras that you can buy in pet shops. Okay. What you do is you, t you can attach them to your pet. And I attached it to this cat who went up, uh, went up a tree and uh, I went up after it. <laughs> and uh, yeah, ended up in a hospital with a broken heel. So. Wow. So would you, would you say that this, this style of film, would you say it's experimental? Or what, what, what sort of genre oh, definitely. Would, you, would you say that you fit into? Yeah, I mean, it's not a documentary, it's a drama, but it's just experimental. Um, I just do what I do. I, I don't really... F I, I'm more influenced by music more than filmmaking. Um, like um i don't know the doors i'm really influenced by the doors or see woo life you know people like that really like yeah. out there music that isn't on top 40 radio you yeah know? would you say it's quite expressionistic then it's kind of you, you do you work with a script is it stuff that's choreographed or is it is it is it stuff that just happens and you shoot it and you influence it while you're there is it yeah uh, the best stuff that happens you know even in any movie is what's improvised i mean you know you take 
know, for example, De Niro, you know, you're talking to me type of stuff. You can't write stuff like that. Yeah. They just kind of have to happen. Um, I just think scripts are old hat. You know, it's the 21st century. I don't need yeah. a script. We just make it happen. That's yeah. how it is. You know, like like music or painting. You just uh, you just let the magic flow by itself. Something that I liked to yours that I saw. Uh, it was yeah. a quote, and it said that life doesn't have a plot. No, it doesn't. So is, does that, it. is that is that kind of is that part of the aesthetic? Then that it's 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 trying to rep represent life as it is rather than as it's kind of shoehorned into. Yeah, it is. Um, I mean, I kind of wanted to cut. I, the th the movie does have a theme running through it, which is like drifters and outlaws, and uh, you can do whatever you want in life, and you don't have to like be tied down to a job, you know, nine to five. You don't have to count on money or anything like that. But uh, I just want to th make things happen by themselves. Mm. Um, it's more there's more freedom that way. I don't want to be tied down. You know. Do you, do you work alone, or I mean, I know you have people that, that you film, but do you have people that work on 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 the shoot? Do you have like oh, sound yeah, people, yeah. And yeah, well, not sound people, <laughs> uh, but uh, loads of different cameramen. I reckon right. there's about twenty twenty different cameramen on the thing. You know, I just give them the mobile phone. I just give my mobile phone to random people. Yeah, uh, there's one episode where I just gave the phone to this guy, and uh, he went outside and he started filming a domestic that was happening to a you know right. husband and wife, and the guy came after him, and that's in the film as well. Right. And you, you, you can't. Scripts to fly yeah, that, and yeah. the guy looked terrified. And, you know, it's it's and phenomenal. It's a long film. Oh yeah, it's, it's all in the movie yeah. and all that. And uh, yeah. How many hours did you shoot? I bet you've got enough for oh, ten Christ. movies. Yeah, I mean, I spent, I spent about a year at getting all the yeah. footage together. You know, to have it like a bit of a direction, because otherwise it's just like random. But it's got yeah. it's it's like very YouTube. Uh, style, you know, it's just when people are uh, watching like these YouTube videos, you, they don't really watch things that are longer than like three or five minutes. Yeah. And I think that's kind of what's happened with the viewer. It's, you know, you got to keep them interested. I mean, I think it's kind of on a par with like uh, Avatar. You know, there's Avatar and then there's my film type of thing, and uh, that's kind of what cinema's progressing into. What I was going to say is, how can people see your movie? What, where is your movie at the moment? Is it is it something that people can watch? And oh yeah, it's uh, it's on YouTube. Just um, type in Black Biscuit full movie and it'll come up yeah. okay what yeah. we're going to do at the moment thanks a lot for that the, the, the talk is not over what we're going to do we're going to play a tune what's the tune the case of the bloody iris the place <laughs> i thought you said the iris <laughs> the case of the, the bloody, bloody iris, iris. take by it away bruno nicolai hey welcome back that was the case of the bloody iris by um someone nicolai bruno nicolai there you go I remembered it getting better i am here with fabrizio federico who is a filmmaker freewheeling artist kind of um he described himself as someone who is committed to art and kind of making films and maybe making films not in a traditional way but using the media that is available to us all like mobile phones youtube mm, how yeah. you doing fab you all right yeah i'm doing real good yeah cool yeah, it's good, it, yeah. good to have you you're an in interesting guy i mean i was looking forward to speaking to you and, and, and hearing some stuff around around how you got into art and and ha i mean what was that journey like i mean you uh, i've read online that you've lived in different places and you've lived in america and yeah i've um you know i'm, I'm born in england but i've lived in italy so you know i used to live in italy and I used to sell ice cream there when I was a kid and stuff like that. And then I went to America, and uh, yeah, I got in. That's kind of where I got really got into like playing guitar and uh, getting yeah. into music and all that. Because my dad had like a massive record collection, yeah. and I'm looking at all the stuff you guys have. Yeah. You guys have We've some got great a few music. Tunes. Yeah, got yeah. some great stuff. So it was music is the first love. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What, why film then? What is it? What What is it that draws you to film? Well, film you can just put anything in it. Mm. You can't. You can put spoken word. You can put music. You can mm. throw art in there. It's just like the ultimate. Uh, it's the ultimate uh, artistic expression. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that's kind of what I, I want to get out to people. Is like just get out there and make a movie. I mean, Black Biscuit costs about five hundred quid to make. Right. It's a feature film. I mean, the feature film shouldn't be costing like millions to yeah, make these yeah, days. Yeah. Know? It's yeah. It's it, we we have all these tools available to us, and I don't mm. think we use them. You know, let's uh, flood uh, the as, market. As, you know, to the full potential. So uh, it's good yeah. to see someone who's kind of really embracing it. And I love. 
love the quote as well that you said uh, said online about how much you loved YouTube and you just thought it was the greatest invention because it's kind oh, of it's phenomenal. It's yeah. the generation gap, isn't it? And, you know, it's like before YouTube and after yeah, YouTube. Yeah, definitely. And, and the influencers are just sticking at everyone these yeah. days. You know. So your film is is Black Biscuit and it's online at the moment. People can put that into YouTube and they can watch the film. Yeah, just type in Black Biscuit on Google for movie or go to YouTube and it's there. Um, it was made under the Pink Hate Manifesto, which is like something I kind of came up with. So yeah. people, you know, if you like the style and you kind of feel like you can go out there and make it this way, you know, kind of like just follow it. They're not rules, you know, just bend and break them as you feel like, that mm. type of thing. I, I read some of the manifesto, I really liked it. That's on your website as well, oh, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, it's it's the, awesome. what's, what's it called, the manifesto? The pink? Uh, pink Ape Manifesto. Pink, what, what's that all about? Why Pink Ape? Oh, uh, you know what, I kind of, uh, I wasn't thinking about it at the time. I just like the imagery behind it, but if you type in Pink Ape, type, make sure you type in Pink Ape Manifesto. Don't type in just Pink Ape. Right. I'm going to leave it up to you. You guys can Google it at okay, later yeah, and yeah. see what comes we've, up. We've got the old web savvy, savvy listeners, <laughs> so I'm I, sure I, they'll find it. I think it's a good sign. <laughs> if you could summarise your, your manifesto or your working method, what, how, how would you do it? What, what will people find in the manifesto? Uh, I think it's like freedom in a bottle. Um, right. I think you can kind of like sell it like that. Um, it's just, yeah, don't listen to anyone. Just follow your own destiny, follow your own road, that, you know, just do what you feel like yeah. I, don't re I don't really see it as hard you know it's just uh, don't I know that a lot of people kind of like have like what university teachers tell them and, uh, and the family and all that but just forget about all that yeah. you know start start over and forget all like the dogma that's kind of like been embedded into you from yeah. an early age talking of dogma did you are they an influence dogma the, uh, oh yeah yeah I love dogma yeah. I, I uh, let's see Dennis Hopper's the last movie um is a film that really stuck with me. I saw that from a young age. Right. I, you know, looking back, and I probably seen it, but I did, and it really like yeah. blew my mind when I saw it when I was like ten or eleven, something like what that. What was it especially about that film that kind of really, really got you going? Well, I kind of feel I'm in the same position as what happened to him when he released that. It's just he went out to Peru and just made this film unlike any other, and when he you know finally got it out there and showed it to mainstream he got axed you know they buried the movie type of, and it's it, you know it's almost like the ultimate court movie and i don't know maybe i'm making like modern court movies at the moment but uh you know we'll see what happens i think it's the same road at yeah. least travel yeah. but i think so it's you, more rewarding identify it very yeah. much very very much do, do you do you feel on the margins of the of the film i mean what 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 how do you feel your position to to the mainstream or and what are your goals around that i mean do, do you would you like to be in in that sort of system sort of making commission films or do you see yourself always kicking against that uh, probably not commission films i like to do my own thing uh i mean i like mainstream movies don't get me wrong um i mean the last film i saw was ted have you seen ted i haven't no oh, it's uh, freaking hilarious right. yeah yeah i mean i do like mainstream um and i grew up like watching like charlie sheen like films like hot shots and stuff like that so i've got a lot of comedy uh, cool. involved in my film as well so it's not all like seriousness it's just like be more place playful you know right it's almost like that i like to be playful when i'm creating because what i uh what i was thinking when i when i saw the the trailer for your film it reminded me of the no way wave uh, oh, yeah, filmmakers yeah, uh, in new york because uh -huh. i saw the blank city documentary probably about six months ago and i really kind of i was saddened that it doesn't si there doesn't seem to be a kind of a link between that that era and now it seems to be like the the underground is more just the pre mainstream mm. it's people that have been to university are working in a, in a certain kind of method and and most of the underground it's short films and stuff it's people that have got an eye on the mainstream and that that really kind of angry madcap yeah. um kind of uh free form filmmaking uh, it, it's just just i found it quite striking that it doesn't seem to be that that much of that sort of stuff around yeah i mean uh, that's one of the main problems is people need to stop making short films they need to just you know just bite the mm. bullet and make a feature because a short film ain't going to be remembered and that's kind of like the problem i mean these people are making these fantastic movies but they're about 10 15 minutes long and they just don't get out there you got a, a feature film will stick to the wall for a bit longer yeah. and that's kind of what they have to do it's not hard you just have to like uh, you just have to be really like persevering the whole time and I think the best thing about it is um, it teaches you patience I'm a lot more patient right. <laughs> since kind of going down this way yeah um, 
what what's happened to the film since it's been out? I mean, what what's what have you done with it? I know that you've been to uh, some festivals and stuff. Oh you? yeah, yeah, it's been really great. Um, managed to get into sight and sound. Um, it was in the publication of like the hundred best movies of all time. So I reckon a lot of people like saw it, and I had all these like directors, you know, calling me up and congratulating me. And I, I think that's like the main thing that I was looking for is like the people that inspired me and to show them, look, you guys let me go out there and do yeah. this, and I think that's phenomenal. Um, you know, BBC's talked about the film, which is kind of cool. It was a bit of a weird experience being on the BBC radio show, though. But uh, what, what was that? Uh, I think it was about March or something okay. like that. What, what was that experience like then? <laughs> well, that's what we were kind of like talking about before. Was yeah. you know, like quick questions type of thing. Yeah. And I like this. It's more like uh, free form. Yeah, you can talk. You know, we like we like someone to come in and and, and speak and 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 get. Get, get, you know. Uh, you guys need a lava lamp in here or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah, yeah. Or incense, I don't we'll know. Write that down, Jay. We'll get that in. <laughs> what I think we do, we'll have another tune and then we will talk a little bit right. more about maybe what you're doing in the future and how people can sort of hook up with uh, what you're up to at the moment. I love it. Hey, that uh, was Waiting for the Sun by the Doors, and that is uh, our guest's, uh, I wouldn't say it's his favourite tune, but it's, uh, they're an influence it's on there. you, it's oh, kind of, yeah. yeah, oh great, uh, I'm, wi I'm Mickey Angel, uh, you're listening to Nottingham Lace, Jay Loftus uh, is the main man here, but I'm co-presenting today, and we're with Fabrizio Federico, who is a, uh, a Derby-based filmmaker, who's been telling us about his exploits, and uh, How's it going? You're right. Oh yeah, yeah nice I've been one. Real good. No, it's been good. Good getting to uh, hear about what you're up to and some of your influences mm. and uh, what's happening for you right now. Um, I'm putting my next film together. Actually, um, I went out to uh, Spain and did a bit of shooting in the desert on the highways. So it's okay. got it's like Halloween in the desert type of feeling. This sounds yeah. very intriguing. Uh -huh, so yeah. how long were you out in Spain for? Um, about two weeks. You know, just out in the desert with this uh, bit of a commune type of cult thing. Okay. You know? Yeah, called Sunseed. But uh, you Dancing know, dancing beneath the moon and kind of is a it bit, typical? Oh, yeah. yeah, is it? My first night actually was like that. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't know. I'm putting my next next one together so I'm looking I'm not I don't really work with actors I like to work with people that are interesting so if anyone feels that uh, they got something to contribute to a film you know get in contact with me it's really easy I'm, I'm pretty accessible like that how, how would people have you got a, an email or is it just so, are you on Twitter or anything like that yeah I'm on uh, Facebook and Twitter and all that but if you just go to was it black biscuit 101 moon fruit you know the main page it's, it's, so yeah it's easy to get in contact with people, people now, were to Google it? um black biscuit or, or your name Fabrizio Federico they'll find you yeah they'll find an email okay, somewhere. So you, you're pretty visible mm. that's that seems to that that's one of the the pointers on your uh, manifesto is not to work with actors um, I do love actors, um, I, I get along with them and all that, but I find it more interesting working with people that aren't acting, because they're giving themselves yeah. 100%, yeah. you know, can't and, get that from an actor. And is that what you're looking for? You're looking for something that's more authentic and, and, and a bit rawer? And yeah, I, I want uh, the absurd of reality, basically. Uh, you the know. absurdness of reality, yeah, ain't that's it just? what I'm looking for. Folks, if you fancy being in uh, one of uh, Fab's movies, you know how to contact him, just Google Black Beard. Uh, is there anything you what you'd like to uh, tell the listeners just before we we wind up? Is there? I mean, your YouTube channel. Uh, uh, what's your YouTube channel for people to uh, see the stuff that you that you're making? And oh yeah, yeah, uh, my music. Uh, I'm working under a band called Mao at the moment, uh, and uh, you know we create music under that name. But uh, just get out there, just get out there and start creating. Uh, I really can't say anything more than that. Nice one. On that note. I'll say uh, thank you very much for coming in. We much appreciate oh, your pleasure. time and all the best for all pleasure. your uh, exploits. Thank and you. Uh, speak to you again soon. Yeah. Bust it.